Come on. Come on. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. What a beautiful day we have here today. Any day that we get to come up to the house of the Lord, sing praises, worship him, lift up together one another. I think that's a good day. If you so feel led this morning, stand and sing with us and offer praises to a heavenly father. Altars open. Come and pray. He's here. Why don't you meet him? You may be seated. Good to see all of you here in the house of the Lord. We're going to celebrate before our prayer here. Al and Alice Gillette, wave your hand. 52 years of wedded bliss. Woo! I know that uh, Tanya Paulison is here. Her and Larry celebrated yesterday. Where's Tanya? Wave your hand. 36 years of wedded bliss. Amen. Anybody else? That's fantastic. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your kindness and grace and the amazing ministry of your word. We ask that you guide us, lead us, direct us, fill us, Lord, with thy precious Holy Spirit, and we will always give you the praise and glory. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. We need our children to come on up. We have any little ones up here? Come on up here today. Good to see you. Hey, darling. All right. Y'all going to have to eat a lot of candy here. Ethan, good to see you. Oh, my, 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 my. We got to put our hands up in the air and say with me, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River, Reverend Bullywing Bullfrog. What's the bullfrog say? Do you remember? Ribbit. You've got it down pat. I love it. Well, Bullywing, some of his favorite critter friends 
or they're gathering for communion. See our communion trays? Y'all are going to take communion with us here at the end of the service. And they were too. Darlene Ant, she said, I remember the first time I took communion. She said, my brother and I, some other ants, we crawled under a door and went into a place and we were about to eat some of the crumbs on the floor that had dropped. They didn't know it was communion. And then they heard somebody say, this is my body and this is my blood. So immediately Darlene Ant said, stop to her brother. Have you ever heard an ant scream? You've probably heard an ant scream, haven't you? No? Y'all heard an ant scream before, haven't you? It's, yeah, oh, sure, 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 sure. Just, it was, stop! And Darlene, she was telling the critters that, and she said, it reminds me of, do you know what this is? A stop sign. sign. Y'all see that? Stop sign. They recognized that right away. And it dawned on Darlene that really communion is a stop sign. Now, have any idea why it would be like a stop sign? We are to stop and think about our lives and think about Jesus coming into our life and dying for our sins and going to heaven so that we can go to heaven too. So if you think about the next time you take communion, even when you take it today, that it's like a stop sign. You stop and you say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. And I take this to remember that you gave your life for me in Jesus name. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for our folks here today. Bless our Sunday school class. Take care of them as only you can. And we'll always give you the praise and glory. And may God's children say. Amen. Ethan, can I get you to carry the candy next door? Folks, stand up, turn around, and greet one another for a moment. We'll then begin our welcome and announcements. All righty. What a beautiful thing to get to chit chat with somebody. Now I got some announcements for you, but most importantly, if you are new here today, we would love to welcome you. We would like to make you feel welcome in such a way that whenever you exit to the left, we have a gift that we would like to give you. We would also like to get to know you a little bit better. So if you could put down just a little bit of information about yourself so that we could possibly stay in contact with you, we would appreciate that. A reminder... For all of those that are our regular attenders, at the ends, there's those red books. Fill them out. Let people know you're here. You got anything new going on in your life? If you want to send some gossip up to the office, fill it out in there for them. Our other announcements. If you want to turn to your bulletins, there is a lot of information in the bulletin, but I've got some information on top of and beyond that. Uh, If you remember uh, last Sunday... All of you were here. We had the joint service, and we had our mission moment, which was the Family Hope Pregnancy Center. And if you did not happen to get a baby bottle, uh, which we fill up with change, maybe more than change, maybe a little bit of green to really help them out, you can get those baby bottles out on the round table, I believe. And then whenever you want to return them, bring them over to the member center. Um, If you all didn't realize also, if you were not here last service, Last week at the joint service, we did a everybody coming into the Global Methodist Church. And along with coming into the Global Methodist Church, you get a new name tag, which you have to purchase. But if you would like to know what that might look like, there are samples out on the member center. And you can then the orders will be able to be made uh, November the 13th and the November the 20th. And the cost will be $6, so go out and look at them, see the different things, whether you need a magnet or a pen uh, for securing that. And then it has been brought to our attention per the safety team. I don't know if you all realize we had a time change today. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Apparently did because you were here at the correct time. So along with that, it's going to get dark a lot quicker comparatively to time. So if you are here of an evening time for some evening event, evening going on, it would be in your best interest and for the safety and for the the peace of mind of our security team if you could park more towards the front instead of in the back where there are way too many shadows. And so if you could do that, it would be much appreciated. We don't want anybody to get hurt. I believe that is all the announcements except for I have a gentleman that is going to come and share something from his heart. 
Rusty Saltzman. If you do not know Rusty, Rusty is going to share something that God has laid upon his heart to share with you all for something that he can do for you and the other members in the church could do for you. But then in turn, he will show you how you can help him out. If you come forward, Rusty. Good morning. How many of you know how good it feels to help others? That feeling you can only get, and that's, see, there we go. Okay. That's a good thing. This list right here has been up there, and believe it or not, I actually got one more signature on today. This is our sign-up sheet for people that are willing to volunteer their time and services to help others. This is doing pretty good. This is the one I'm up here. I need some help with this one. We don't have anybody signed up yet that needs help. And I kind of want to share a story because I was one of the people that never wanted to sign this list. And it's very easy to want to help others, but it's very hard to ask for help. I know in my own case, I had a pride issue because I don't know if it's the way we were raised, you know, that as you get older, you learn to take care of things yourself and maybe that gets out of hand, but it's okay to ask for help. That's, that's what our church family is for is to ask for help when you need it. You don't have to feel guilt. You don't have to feel shame. God only wants you to feel that long enough for you to get to him to say, hey, God, I need to give this to you because I'm not going to do the right thing with it. Amen. So I noticed too on here that anybody who did this and took this that I will and I do when Pastor Eddie read it, but the third one on here. As members of Christ Universal Church, you will be loyal to the church and its congregation by faithfully participating in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service to strengthen its ministries. I said I will. I'm sure that there's a lot of you, so I'm up here today to ask for help so that we can get this, get a few names on this list. So if you know of anybody, if it's you, that might need a little help. It doesn't matter what it is. People in here all have unique gifts. God gave us all unique things that we can use. We just need some help by somebody putting some names on this list. Even if you know somebody that needs help, reach out to them. See if we can get this filled up a little bit so that we can get grow our church, so that we can grow our own ministries. It's something important. We're going to get there. I know it's God's timing, but if I can come up here and just share. I had a lot of rough patches we did in Ohio before we moved down here. And it was funny because it was just a couple years ago that I learned this, but I always talked about how I liked helping others and I'd share it with my family. You know, that's one of the best feelings in the world. And I needed help. And my grandma finally said something to me. She goes, why won't you let anybody help you? You know what it feels like, but don't you think other people want to feel that blessing? It kind of hit me strong. So I'm up here to do the same thing today. And if there's anybody that wants or needs help, Please do not feel shame. Do not feel like that you're going to be a burden on somebody else. There's people who are willing to donate their time and, and what they can do to help others. And for those who can't give financially in an offering, for those who there are certain things they can't do, this is something that will help them feel good too because, let's face it, all this goes to honoring God. And, and people, when you help people out, they're going to look to God, and that's where that glory is going to go, and that's where it should go. So if I can get some help out here, if anybody knows anybody that, that can be put on this list, please just reach out, talk to God. There's going to be good things that happen. And this will be back here again. Um, what center is that? Member. The Member Center. It's on the far corner of the Member Center closest to the quilts. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. Thank you for your heart of service. It's... It's always hard to do the other heart of service, the heart of being served. It's something we got to work on as Christians is to not only serve, but to let other people serve us. I ask at this time if you would stand with me for the reading of our Holy Scripture today. The Scripture comes from Luke 20, verses 27 through 33. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus with question. Teacher, they said. Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman, the woman, and died childless. 
The second and then the third married her. And in the same way, all seven died, leaving no children. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be since the seven were married to her? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Before I lift up the prayer concerns, I got a few praises. Again, I want to always, it's always exciting that last week was a praise. Just again, for us all to be joined three services together under one roof. I just, I, I can't mention enough how much that means to me as an assistant pastor. And I'm sure it means, well, a lot to you, all of you all as believers, just to see this church filled a little bit more than it is on a normal Sunday. And speaking of the, the, the services that Rusty is able to do, we had, uh, I've got a final tally for all the people who helped in the flea market and the bake sale that went on. The tally that was mentioned that I lifted up at last service was not quite the total and final clear tally. The final tally is $5,246.06. What a blessing it is to be able to serve in any facet that the Lord opens up for us. And we want to thank everybody who was a part of that and made that happen. All those people that were behind the scenes that just so much goes on to getting that done. In addition, Change for Change last month brought in $101. So that's another big thanks there. And talk about answers to prayers. I don't know if you all have heard about Keegan, also known as Sean McIntyre, that was uh, a young boy that was unconscious on the table for about 10 minutes without oxygen, and that wasn't that long ago in time. He is now about ready to possibly leave the hospital next week. I say that's an answer to prayer. Doesn't mean the road ahead is going to be smooth and easy, but it's one of many answers to prayers that I know that God is going to work in that young man's life. In addition, I'd like to lift up my brother Ray and Kathy Sanders. They are both ill right now, and Ray's uh, treatment for cancer has been postponed because of this. Maybe it's God saying, I'm going to postpone it, and I'm just going to miraculously heal you. I don't know. God works in mysterious ways, and I'm not going to try to guess how he works, but we want to lift them up this time because they've got a full plate on them. Also, I uh, want to mention Mary Beckett. She is home from surgery. Uh, Diane Takahashi uh, from the previous service, uh, she uh, had her eye surgery and it went well. Joe Farley was uh, in the hospital uh, earlier this week, but he is out and doctors told him to quit checking things, that he is getting older and he's doing quite well and to just live his life. So he is doing quite well. Joe is uh, doing well and so we want to thank the Lord for that. Paul Arnaud has uh, cataract surgery. And then our own Deb from the office has a uh, office pr uh, has a procedure coming up uh, tomorrow, so we want to lift her up in our prayers. Uh, also, to mention, um, Tori Hamilton is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes, the whole a whole family just talking about cancer. It's it's ran rampant with the family there, and we want to lift them up. Uh, Tori has been put on hospice care. She's younger than me. So that's young. But we know that we have a Lord that is going to have open arms. We just pray for support for their family and everyone that's there. Lift up, send prayers for comfort. I, I, I mean, I have no words, but I know who God and the Holy Spirit that can be there and minister to them at this time. And hand it over to my brother Eddie. As you know, it's um, the Sunday after All Saints Day. It's always November the 1st. The closest Sunday after we read the names of those connected with our church that have went on to heaven since our last All Saints Day. Uh, it was quite a lengthy list. We have uh, the sound uh, is going to just do a chime after each of these names, and then we'll pause a moment, and then Bobby will come and lead us to the Lord. Walter Davis. <laughs> Jack Monroe, Carol Straub, Bob Stacy, Ina Murdoch, Virgil Reed, 
Pete Peterson, Lynn Rinko, Tom Wilkerson, Al Martinez, Ann Hart, Francis Brown, James Brown, Betty Allen, Suzanne Miller, Betty Collins, Jenny Flanagan, McKay Drake, Don Worm, Terry Jackson, Raymond Ellis, Kim Harris, Sally Barger, Nancy Dodds, Terry Roberts, Chris Baker, Wanda Cox, Ed Flanagan, Paul Fata, Paul Valmir. Lord, we commit these dear folks into thy loving hands. Amen. Brother Bobby. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Yes, he is. He, he woke us up this morning and allowed us to set aside our differences and come to a place where we can all worship and just give back a, a portion to what he's given us. Before we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, just like to thank Rusty. Yeah, we, we remember when he first came with us and he had that drive when him and I first started talking to be a part of this church and to give back. And we, we say thank you, Rusty, to you and your family for being part of our, our church. You're so welcome here. And the other thing is uh, uh, I got a text from Miss Jo Kobe. You know, she had um, surgery and she asked for our church to continue to pray as she she's recovering. And I'm so glad as we stayed each week to be a part of a praying church when we hear all of those prayer concerns and those folks trust and believe that we will pray and lift them up. So um, I'm so delighted to be a part uh, of that. Um, as Justin and our pastor always state, during our prayer time, our altar is always open for you to come and cast your cares uh, upon his feet. I'm so thankful to see Miss Debbie, that pastor, lifted up our church secretary. She's She's got some upcoming procedure. So Debbie will keep you in our thoughts and prayers. So if Debbie comes up this time, we like to surround her and let her know that we're on that same journey with her. But as Andy plays uh, softly, we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, I come to you today praying for everyone, Father, today that's under the sound of my voice. And Father, those that are tuning in online, worshiping, Father, in their respectable places. We come today to give back a portion for what you've given us. Father, you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, who died for all of our sins. Father, he hung on the cross. And we say thank you today because you're alive and well. Father, your word says by your stripes, Father, we're healed. And we thank you for being in our midst right now. Father, we pray that you have your way. Father, somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs a miracle. Father, we know you perform miracles where the doctor says no. Father, you've given them a new life. And we say thank you for all that you've done. Father, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. Remember those names that pastor lifted up. 
that has gone before us. We thank you for the service that they provided for this church. We thank you for the life that they live. Father, let their lives still live through us and their service that they gave to your church for many years. Father, now we know that you've placed them in a body that will, that will never die, but have everlasting life. I know we mourn again when we hear those names, but you've been our strong tower for so many years. Father, let us lean on you one more time. For your goodness, we lean on you for your grace. Father, for your mercy, let your grace and mercy rain down from the heavens right here and amongst us. Cleanse us, Father, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. And we say thank you for all that you've done. Thank you in advance. Thank you for our ministry for our pastor, our associate pastor. We thank you for all that they have contributed to this church this far. Father, they truly let their light shine through you for all to see. Thank you for the message that we are about to receive today. Let our cup truth be runneth over that we can share the word when we depart from this service today. Now, Father, I ask that if you go in the hospitals, nursing homes, rehab centers, county jails. Father, somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs you right now. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Someone that's going through cancer needs healing. Someone that is in the midst of discomfort. Father, give them comfort. Someone that's struggling to see. Father, let your light shine. Father, where we're weak, make us strong. Father, your word says we have not because we ask not. And we thank you for Rusty coming up asking. Let that sign-in sheets get filled up. We can show that you have given us and we've given back to those that are most fortunate than we are. Father, I ask that you look on our nation as a whole. Russia and Ukraine. Father, no weapon form shall prosper. But those that are fighting for freedom, we thank you for freedom right now. We can come to a place where there's no fighting, where we claim victory in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, as we lift up our silent prayer, Father, remember the Fulford family this morning as they continue to get better. The little one, Pastor Eddie's sons and daughters, Father, go in their house right now. Father, be with Joey as he looked to you. Father, we know heaven has no ending. It has everlasting life. Father, be more merciful with joy, healing, Father, from the inside out. He a true believer that when he looks to the hills, which cometh his faith. Father, his help cometh from you. Father, we thank you as I stand for joy today. Be with him. Father, let him know you're too wise to make mistakes, too just to do wrong. Father, we're going to give you the honor and the praise as our worship team come we thank you for communion today you allowed us to partake in you in you and you alone father you said take thee and remember me how can we forget that you gave your only begotten son for me and for all of your children father we can never repay you but today we give him back a portion to what you've given us with our worship today, with our voices today. Father, we're here to make a joyful noise unto you. In Jesus' name. Somebody help me say, in Jesus' name. Let's give him some praise. Give him some praise. 
Father, we love you. We honor and we give you the glory and the praise. And may all of God's people say, amen. Let's all stand together, if you will. We just received a note, praise team, so I know somebody will want to come up and pray for them, uh, that the young lady we were praying for went to heaven last night. We just got that on a text. So uh, all that family, that's the uh, Susie Blouser family, the Terry Roberts family, Terry and Sherry. So you just want to lift them up to the Lord. If somebody can come up and pray for them would be beautiful. We have one song on Communion Sunday, so the altar is open, team. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your sweet spirit being in this place. We know that our loved ones, Lord, if they're not here with us in Christ, they are with you eternally. We give you praise and glory. Guide us now as we receive our communion message and then receive the sacrament together in Jesus' name. And may all of God's children say, Amen. you may be seated. Brother Justin's going to bless us this morning. I've been told that maybe one of these days this might not make me nervous and scared half to death. But I don't know when you're sharing the word of a God, the God, the one true, only God, everlasting. I think there's always going to be some weight in sharing that. There's going to be some weight in living that. But thankfully, he's going to help us carry the load. Pray one more time with you. Heavenly Father, as Paul says, help there be no eloquence within my words. Help none of these words to be anything that is Justin. 
Help them to be completely absent of me, possibly, dear Lord, and full of you. May your Holy Spirit use my mouth and my lips as a way to pass on a message that you have begun to work into my life and into my heart, that I may be called faithful and a well done. May our hearts be open to the words that come from your good, good word. I pray this in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. Interesting, interesting scripture, I must say, as I tried to jump in and figure it out what I might say, and I have recently decided to quit trying to say what I'm going to say and hopefully let God talk. We'll see how that goes this morning. It's very interesting whenever we think, Eddie had lifted this up, whenever you talk about the Sadducees and them not believing in the resurrection and the old joke is that is why they are sad, you see. <laughs> but there is truth to that, and, I, and it, really, it really got to hit me as I was thinking about going from praying about Tori and then finding out that she has gone on. It would be sad, you see, if she did not have a hopeful resurrection It would be sad, you see, if we, like the Sadducees, tried to hold to a portion of the Old Testament, Moses' laws, ones that talk a whole lot about, about not doing this, how you're supposed to live. I mean, a lot of rules. But for what? They had no eternal hope. We look out in the world, there's a lot of people that don't have hope. I think sometimes, if we're honest, some of us sitting in here may live a life similar to the Sadducees, to where we may follow portions of this and not really have a hope in an eternal resurrection. That's pretty sad, you see. But Jesus lifts up some very comforting words at the very end of his response to the Sadducees. He says in verse 38 of that chapter, He is not a God of the dead, but of the living, because all are living to him. In my footnotes, it says, in addition to the, the idea of to him, means with him. So I hope we are a church that believes in the hope of a resurrection. What does that mean, though? Living in a life hopeful of a resurrection. I think sometimes we go to the next step. We have people that just kind of formally do stuff with no hope of a resurrection. And then we have those of us who come to church because that's what our family's been doing. We believe in a resurrection but we might look something like a church out of Revelations. We might look like a church of Laodicea. We might be a church that is possibly lukewarm because we just kind of believe in a resurrection. We don't let the assurance of the grace that God gave us whenever his son died on the cross to cover all of our sins so that we may have that blessed assurance to go into heaven. Not by anything we do, except for saying yes or no. As I began thinking about my life and how I have come into church many, many times and I just did enough to get by. So I thought, well, that's just a, not a very good Christian life if we really think about it. God calls us to be more. But not only does he call us, he promises us to change us. I hope we are a church that believes in two forms of resurrection. And this is where I'm going to keep my focal point. Not only do we have the blessed assurance of a resurrection on into eternity, but we have the hope for a resurrection on this side. 
Now, what on earth am I talking about? So you consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God, in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires. And do not offer any of your parts to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. As for those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God. All the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin will not rule over you because you are not under the law, but you are under grace. God doesn't just offer us a a, a half-life on this side. He is a God who can do abundantly more. He is a God that whenever you die out to self can show the world what a resurrected life on this side looks like. A life that has come up out of the grave of sin. Paul also writes, if I can find it, I have been crucified with Christ It is no longer I, but Christ who lives within me. I live by the faith of the Son of God who lived in me, gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ Christ died for nothing. Have we truly given every single ounce of ourselves to God on this side. Are there things right now as I'm talking that the Holy Spirit is shining a light into your life that maybe you ought to do something about it? Because if he is, then maybe you ought to do something about it. Because that will fester and grow and become who you are. And whenever that grows, then you will be like one of those who was knocking on the door with the sin that you've let grow on you, untamed, unsquelched, un- uh, and God won't recognize you. Take fully the grace that God has given us for this side. Live a life abundantly in Christ. Live as if it is not I, but Christ who lives within me. The church is often looked at as this building. We talked about that again. We talk about it many times. And going off what Eddie shared Thursday about that we are to be the sanctuary us individually. Can't always worry about your neighbor next to you. You can't even worry about your spouse sometimes. You have to worry about your relationship with God. You have to make sure that your sanctuary, your vessel here is listening and doing what God's telling you to do. Not easy. To be quite honest, you look at Jesus' life, That wasn't easy. And he was the quintessential perfection. The perfection that we are all striving to live like on this side. One of the things I'm really getting at is that sometimes we live a life with God as our Savior. We're going around, God save me from this, God save me from that, God save me here. But we got to make him Lord in our lives, Lord and Savior. King of kings, Lord of lords. What does that mean in each of your lives today? What does that mean putting barriers up against? What does that mean tearing down Asher poles 
and old high-mounted things. I've talked about this many times because it's something that we as people struggle with. We have our idols, and we've got to tear them down. For if we do not live like a resurrected church on this side, why on earth would anybody out there want to come in here? What do we have? What in our life is true evidence that we have been sinful self laid to rest and brought up as a follower of Christ on this side? Then we can give the Lord's Supper to the world. Because then we will have truly taken part in the Lord's Supper. We're going to have an opportunity here in just a few moments to partake in the Lord's Supper. And as you come forward, I encourage you to ask these questions to yourself. Is my life going to be sad, you see, that I don't truly take a hold of a resurrection in eternity? Do I need to take the first step in my salvation and begin on the journey? Or maybe you've been on the journey and you want the sanctification of the Holy Spirit where you have set yourself apart to where not only do you believe in a resurrection beyond, but you believe that you can live on this side a life dedicated, set apart, holy to the one true living God. That's the only way that we're going to be able to make a difference. One of the big things getting in the way Rusty lifted up is pride. If you happen to be here uh, at an 11 o'clock service a few weeks ago, Steve Willis lifted up the easy words that we need to say to God is help. And sometimes even when you're further down that road, re-humbling yourself, constantly re-humble yourself. Because it's not by, by your own works that you've gotten here, it's but by the grace of God. Hold on to the grace of God. Read about it. Do a word search. And this is full of grace. Full of it. There are some requirements of repentance, of turning away. That's not just a one-time thing either. That's a daily thing. Pick up your cross. If you would bow your heads with me as we head into our time of communion. Heavenly Father, continue to work in us. Purify us, dear Lord. Search us, the depths of us. If there is something that we have been callous to in listening to you, Shine some light on it. Make it hurt. Make us aware of it. If we're aware of it, give us the boldness to claim what your grace can do and eradicate that from our lives. Help us to come out of the tomb as Lazarus did. Help us to come out of a tomb that is a guarantee of a life of sin. Help us keep you as our focal point. Help us to partake in this beautiful supper that you have prepared for us. A simple meal that you make extraordinary when we let the meaning really register in our heart. I ask this in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. Can we say amen again? What a wonderful message in preparation for the Lord's Supper.
As we mentioned earlier, that this is a great Sunday, the first Sunday of each month to respond to the worship experience, the music, the prayers, the message that Brother Justin has given to us. Our communion is open to all. You do not have to be a member of this church to participate. Those that are online, you can take a moment and find a piece of bread and some juice uh, because the, the ornament itself is not what's important. The symbol itself we are to do, as we said earlier, to stop for a moment and remember what Jesus has done for us. Can we all say amen? amen. We have the gluten-free wafers here, so when you come forward to receive the sacrament, if that is what you would like, please ask for that. We're going to ask uh, that the ushers and stewards prepare um, to... Uh, serve us. We're going to share the Apostles' Creed together. That's part of our 930 tradition, this ancient creed. The Global Methodist Church has encouraged us to look back at our ancient creeds that go back just a little after Jesus' actual time here on earth. This is what the early church fathers and mothers believed. So I'm going to ask we put that on the screen there and that we would say it together. You may remain in your seats. This is our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There are some terms in the creed that, because they're ancient, may be hard to understand, especially if some of our folks are young here today when we say that he is here for the resurrection of the quick and the dead. The quick represents those that are alive. Someday Jesus will resurrect those that are alive and those that are dead to have a new heavens and a new earth. Can we all say amen? That is a beautiful time. It is up to the parents if you would like your children to receive the sacrament. When we come forward, uh, we just take the sacrament, and you're welcome to stand or kneel at the altar for a moment or return back to your seats. Uh, and then we're going to all take communion together, actually. It is all the bread and the juice in one container if you are new with us today. And we begin from the back of the church, the center aisles, and then we will move over to the section here to serve those in our corner areas too. John and Jeannie will be serving us. And again, if you need the gluten-free bread, uh, please, if you would request that. Let us bow again for a moment. Lord, we now respond to the beautiful worship today. Our coming forward is an act of worship, dear Lord. It means we're coming to you. We're laying down our burdens. We're asking that you be not just the Savior, but the Lord of our life, as Justin shared with us a moment ago. We're asking that any idol that's in our life, we lay it down. We're asking your help. We're asking you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're stopping in our mind and focusing just on you. We remember you died on the cross. We remember you gave your life. You shed your blood. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The altar is open all during this time. We begin from the back and begin to move forward here. Praise the Lord.
One cannot come forward in a few moments. We'll be more than glad to bring the sacrament to you. and around if there's anyone that just raise your hand if you have not received the sacrament as we shared with the children this is a time to pause to stop and reflect upon the Lord. If you will take the bread, this represents his life. He is 33 years, very young, taken away from this world. The final three years in complete ministry. This represents that life. Take and eat and remember our Lord. The cup, you'll uncover that, represents his blood. It's not just his life, but now his death. He died for us. He shed his blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The perfect Lamb of God takes our place and dies for our sins. Take and drink and remember our Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for forgiving us. We probably need to say that over and over again with all of the struggles we have. The good news is you are so gracious that you forgive us constantly of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We give you praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. There are receptacles by each of the exit doors. When you exit here in just a few moments, you can drop these cups in there. The offering plates are still there if you would like to make an offering or if you have a prayer concern. The Lord has laid on your heart. If you will drop them in there, they will go on our prayer chain. We have hundreds and hundreds of people praying for each other. Please stop by in the narthex. Our prayer wall is private prayer requests, only you and God know these they're never read they will be burned as we get close to ash wednesday with all of our prayer requests that we put on a card we have our prayer bears that you might want to give out to someone we have the uh, prayer quilts out there we try to mention those each sunday uh, brother rusty will be out there brother justin in a few moments and uh, just a place to fellowship minister love on each other care for each other it's just a beautiful time the altar remains open as we have our closing song. Let's all stand together, if you will. Devil 
that ground, that ground. the final round. The devil got scared when he found Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory for you have had victory over the evil one. Help us to share the good news in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may all of God's children say, Amen. Turn around and hug at least seven people, a holy number, and we'll see you next Sunday morning.